What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we are going to be doing another live reaction to another Dragonite PvP build and this time it's going to be by Dots Gaming. Now I will tell you guys in the past, Dots and I don't really agree on much of anything with the Dragonite class in general. So spoiler alert, it's going to be a spicy video. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Welcome back, and before we hop into the meat and potatoes of this video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members here on YouTube. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. I really appreciate the support you guys provide. And let me preface this video by saying that anything I say in this video is strictly my opinion. There is no right or wrong way to run a build. And please, guys, do not go over to Dasa's channel and be negative down in the comments. Like, no one wants to see any of that. All right. Appreciate it. Much love. Let's get into the video. Now I'm going to break this down a lot more. Uh, how long is this video? 35 minutes. Well, well, well Dots is a little windy, so uh, well, I'll try not to make it 35 minutes. So we got gear, we got skills. He talks a long time about skills. You have uh, food, Mundus, uh, CP, rotation. Where's the gameplay? Probably in the intro. All right, I'm already liking this stat sheet, and, and let me kind of clarify what I said last stream about stats. Like, I know your stat sheet isn't everything, and the reason I like having max high stat pools is mainly just for your resources. Because if you're floating around 22k resources, you're already starting the fights off with minus 8,000, right? So you get off to a really bad start, you, you kind of screwed. But just by looking at his character sheet, I mean it's. It's uh, it's looking pretty solid. I'm not sure if this is buffed or not, but uh, yeah. So good, good start, good start. Uh, wish he had an intro though. Um, I know he can do it. He's got hundred thousand subs. Surely you can make an intro. So they absolutely gutted Mag DK. If you guys do not know, every single skill that was relevant has been just shit on, man. Like the DK has no burst to begin with. Like you molt whip, that is it. Okay. So them nerfing Molten Whip by like 20-25% effectively killed the class, you killed the dots. What does this class have going for it? I mean, it still still has a lot, right? But is nowhere near what it used to be. And the whole Oaken Soul nerf as well, man, they, they gutted the DK. Like, absolutely destroyed it. Uh, but, I mean, we're making it work, so. Thankfully, I was able to keep the core of this build relatively the same from my previous uh, build uh, for last patch during High Isle, but I made a lot of little changes that the Mag DK on, needed, uh, specifically to not only increase stamina sustain, since we now have more demand on our stamina now than ever, but the biggest thing is that we just need more damage, man, especially yeah. with the nerf. Uh, he has such a good point. Damage, you have to just almost run two damage sets and like like take your l's take your losses take your deaths hurry up and respawn you almost have to have two damage sets and i mean it sucks but uh it is what it is to searing heat that in my opinion felt a little bit unnecessary um they lowered our dot damage from like uh, the dot damage increase we get i believe it was from 33 percent down to um 25 percent it just it, it, it gave us a like not enough consistent pressure to really like push people over with like you know the stuff that i've been running previously and so i really needed to kind of go back to the drawing board with like a lot of small things and try to basically squeeze out as much damage okay one thing i want to point out on his stat sheet right now he has way too much cr critical resistance <clears throat> um I'm assuming he's running all in pin unless he's running the the champion points that is not what you want to do this is not a good sign right here like having this much in pin in pin is probably like other than of course like invigorating is is just not a very stat dense trait to have you either want to have like well fitted and then on your heavy pieces you know have reinforced and uh maybe sturdy depending on uh what your uh your back bar your, your mitigation uh bar is but uh this this is red flag right here from my build as possible and thankfully i have managed to achieve that this patch and now my class you know my class my build feels very very solid and i've had really good success with it i've tested this in duels battlegrounds open world pvp it has worked in every instance it's been very strong um i do plan on having a gameplay video coming out soon with i'm gonna stop right here Dots, if you're watching this, I guarantee in your 
your your analytics you will see a drop off of your viewer retention right here at the two minute and two second mark because if i care about a decent pvp dragonite build as soon as you tell me that you do not have footage in a 35 minute 22 second build video i'm out of 5000 like i'm clicking away there's no way i'm going to sit here and listen to someone talk for 35 minutes without gameplay footage i've made that mistake in the past so many times promising oh watch it on the stream oh watch it here no one wants to do that they want to see people get dicked on that's what they want to see at the beginning of the video to draw you in they want to see this build just absolutely murdering potatoes okay that's that's what we all want to see the fact that you do not have pvp footage like even, even background like like battleground footage who cares who can just just something to appease your your aesthetics like just something like if you go through this entire video and do not have pvp footage i'm gonna have to give it a thumbs down that's i mean that's that's just the way it is like if it's like an eight minute you know video yeah you build video quickly going through it, whatever but a 35 minute video this should be like 10 minutes of mon montage material in my opinion highlights for my Yo, thank you so much for 999 Zertex. Keep up the good work, bro. Yo, I'm trying, brother. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm doing some of this React content. Uh, you all really like Deltias, so I'll be making a video about this uh, tomorrow as well. But uh, if you guys want to see more content like this, you know, but obviously let me know because I don't know what you guys like. So uh, if you like it, you just tell me, just so I know. But thank you so much for the 999. I will hop on the uh, jumping jacks uh, at the end of this uh watching this video okay just remind me please stream and if you do want to see this build played live you can find it over on my twitch channel link in the description below but i will have a gameplay video coming out very soon where i have some highlights from doing some uh 2vx and 3vx with some friends um as well as the battleground so you can expect 2vx and 3vx with friends if you are doing a build video in my opinion, uh, this may be completely biased, and, and, and if you want to be a content creator for ESO, um, you need solo footage. If you are in a 2VX, 3VX, that does not do the build justice. It doesn't show you how it performs, because when you play solo, and when you play in a group, the game plays different. It is completely different. Your mindset has to be different. It, when you make a mistake, everything is absolutely amplified. So when you see a solo player and good solo play footage, you know that build is solid. As soon as you start seeing groups, you need to be a little sus of the build. It may be good. Some builds are meant for group play, but please like explain that at the beginning of the video. Like, hey, this is a group play build. You know what I mean? Expect those to come out uh, relatively soon. Um, but like I do always say though before my build videos guys, this is just what I like, what I use, and what works for me. If you want to run something else, try something else, do something else on your DK. Mike Kajer, I believe, I'm just going to tell you why they nerfed DK into the ground. It's because I keep bagging Gilliam in Battlegrounds. Gilliam the Nightblade, the Rogue, you know, whatever. Gilliam the Rogue. I swear to you, it's because of that. They nerfed Iron Blood. They nerfed DK into the freaking ground. They nerfed Oakland Soul. Anything to do with the DK just got gutted and Nightblade got buffed. Coincidence? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Please go right ahead. This is just what I personally have found success with. Now, kicking the build off, guys. Our first set is going to be two pieces of Balor. So okay. So let me stop right here. Balorgs. So. If I had to get, if you run Balorgs, Balorgs is a an okay set for the Dragon Knight. If you have no intentions on running Corrosive and you're just going to leap spam, then yeah, Balorgs is awesome because you can get some really juicy crits into your Molten Whip leap combo. It, it's actually really flashy. So if he's playing like a, a really aggressive build, I mean, I'm all down for Balorgs. Um, he is running imp Impenetrable. You guys know how I feel about Impen. Instead of running Impen, you need to be running Well Fitted if you have the option. Um, you may notice on some of my build videos, I still have Impen. That's just because I'm lazy and I don't have enough Transmute Stones. I refuse to do dailies. So Balor gives us a line of weapon damage, and when you use an ultimate ability, you gain weapon damage equal to the amount of total ultimate consumed and physical and spell penetration equal to 23. Um, let me just, uh, one more thing to note. The reason this is not good if you run Corrosive because like half of this set is wasted because it gives you a physical and a spell pen. When you're in Corrosive, it doesn't matter anyway. You get 100k physical and spell pen. So um, if you want to run Corrosive, don't run Balorg. Three times the amount consumed for 12 seconds. Balorg is, in my opinion, a necessary monster set for Magic of Dragon Knight. Disagree. Patch. Without Balorg, you simply do not have the damage to... I and disagree. Heat but also got nerfed. Fuck, man. 
do not have the damage to- Um, I do disagree with that. You, you don't have to add battle orcs for damage. Um, corrosive armor, let, let, let me kind of put it in perspective of how powerful corrosive armor- or, We'll get, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, I'm assuming he doesn't have corrosive because he has battle orcs, but we'll, we'll get to that point when we get there. To push over really tanky players. Unfortunately, it's just not there. Um, kind of stinks, but- Balorg has just really fixed for me a lot of the problems that Mag DK feels like it has he needs on the offensive good. side of things. And especially with the changes to Vigor and out getting minor resolve. And I, I don't want you guys to take this as like a negative video. This is just simply me putting my, my two cents in. And I, I'm really going to pick this one apart. Delta is I could have picked it apart a little bit more. And I went back and kind of watched the video. And it was like lackluster on my part when it comes like to uh, constructive criticism and points to be made and things we got to talk about. So in, in this video, um, it is going to be much more in depth. So if you guys want to hear more that more like that, then, then uh, I'm I'm gonna absolutely tear this apart, man. So I don't mean this bad in any way toward anyone. I'm just gonna put my thoughts out there and let you guys kind of put your own thing together. You know what I mean? Of Magma Incarnate does become a lot less valuable for any sort of solo play just because you already get minor resolve from the skill. And so your monster set choices do kind of get kind, you know, they get a bit low. You don't really have a lot to choose from. And so for me, Balorg is just kind of perfect with the way that this patch and the past couple of patches have been, frankly, where you're not really pressuring your targets down, you're kind of bursting them down. And so Balorg gives you that peak burst damage when you're going for a leap into a whip combo. Also, Balor does give you the option to pull your ultimate for a bigger smack of damage, depending on how tanky the target is. So for that reason, Balor is my monster set of choice uh, for the Lost Depths patch. And, and perfectly fine. You don't have to run the same build. You don't have to run meta stuff. I mean, it's justification behind it. You can run whatever the hell you want. I'm not, not dissing anyone. So yeah, Balor, I mean, it's good. It has this place. Now my front bar five piece is still going to be Burning Spell Weave, giving me a line of Magicka. Um, Burning Spell Weave is, is always really good. It's one of my go-to sets for literally everything, probably top three sets. Uh, you can toss Burning Spell Weave on literally any class and it will, it will just do well. Weapon damage, critical chance. When you deal damage with a flame ability, you apply the burning status effect to an enemy and increase your weapon and damage by... Yo, Vince Thomas with the $10. Yo, thank you so much, man. I swear to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we'll be doing jumping jacks at the end of this yo thank you so much vince for the ten dollars thank you thank you brother thank you thank you for 90 for eight seconds once every 12 seconds burning spell weave is still in my opinion going to be your best offensive set simply due to the fact that the uptime is very solid combine that with the fact that you get the burning status effect application which assuming combustion is not on cooldown that gives you about a thousand magicka returned and on top of that bsw is non-conditional weapon damage now and it also is a buff on your character so i'll work on my form on, on the jumping jacks bsw on your front bar and then for some reason you need to go back to your back bar you simply bar swap and that buff from bsw is still there and will apply to your vigor your coag and your back and that's a really good point. If you are new to like Magic and Dragon or ESO PvP in general, um, the Burning Spell we buff, you can just proc it on one bar and it follows you on both bars. It's not like a snapshot ability. It's going to follow you to your front bar and your back bar. Not only does it bolster your damage, but also bolsters your healing. So just, just clarifying. Back bar abilities. It is just something that makes BSW a very... Um, is Mars still good? We are going to test that today on the worst class ever. I tested on the Drag Knight. It was fucking phenomenal still yet. Um, we're going to test on the Magsork with no wards here momentarily. Valuable five piece set. And it is why I've always run it on my front bar. Now my staple back bar five piece has not changed. That is still going to be Daedric. <sighs> oh man. Let me go off on a tangent of why I do not like Daedric Trickery. Dots and Deltia swear by Daedric Trickery. That's fine. This is a craftable set. It's really good. Just pick up, slap on your DK. It's like a set and forget type of thing. Why I do not like it? Because you can get access to all of these major buffs besides major heroism. You can get major expedition through race against time. You can get major mending through a resto pool. You can get major vi vitality. Uh, I, I forget there is a way that there's there's some way you can get major vitality on DK, fragment and shield, and you know other avenues like that. And then uh, you also get major protection from your champion point passives. So you get four out of the five already. The only one that you are rolling the dice for is heroism. So I don't like a set 
that you have a one in five chance on getting the buff that you really want. Yes, when you get major heroism, it's freaking phenomenal. But to, to base your back bar around this, man, I just just not a fan personally of, of Daedra Trickery, but uh, that's that's just my opinion. I've heard a lot of success with it. Um, I personally prefer Kind March's Cruelty. That's such more of an impressive set and pretty much just the exact same thing as Daedra Trickery. Instead of you getting major buffs, you reply making major debuffs to your opponent, which is going to coincide with Doss's point earlier about having to do more damage in ESO, okay? Trickery, health, stamina, magic. Yeah, thank you, Bob. You deal damage, you gain one of five random major buffs for 21 seconds every nine seconds. Expedition, protection, mending, heroism, and vitality, all of which are very valuable. Mending and vitality give you huge boost to your healing. Protection just straight up makes you tankier. Expedition is kind of meh, but you know, can still be nice to get. But the MVP of this set is going to be the major heroism. If you combine the major heroism from Danger Trickery with the minor heroism from our potions, your ultimate gain is through the roof. It also combines extremely well with Valor, because obviously if you can ult more and if you could also generate ult faster, you have the chance to keep Valor's uptime higher or even achieve bigger Valor's faster. On top of that, I've actually tested Daedric Trickery against dedicated sustain sets, and the heroism just feels like it Oof. beats them all out. On top of that, getting those nice pads to all three of your resource pools does feel great to help round out our stats at really, really nice amounts. And so for that reason, Daedric Trickery has- I kind of feel like the two, three, and four pieces are just kind of lame. Uh, the, the health is okay. Having extra stamina on your back bar is, no way, you'll have extra stamina all the time, but like having extra magic on your back bar is that I guess okay. I, I really just don't like the build up. I much prefer like if this did crit, yeah, by all means. Still be crit or resistances, that'd be great. I just don't like this set, guys. I, I I'll stop, I'll stop. It's still been a DK staple for me and my favorite back bar five piece of choice. It also doesn't negatively impede you in any way. And so for that reason, it's just easily a DK staple of mine. I'll pretty much always run BSW Trickery until either some new cracked set comes out or one of them for some reason gets nerfed, which I don't think. Have you not heard of Mara's Bomb? That is the most cracked set in ESO, even post nerf expect to happen now with this setup you end up having two one piece slots so our first one will be trainee to just boost our health a little bit more um you probably okay in my opinion guys correct me if i'm wrong but i think it's more advantageous to change these to infuse weapon damage because you get more damage and more healing if that is correct um i believe i am but that's why i always do infuse that's why i've always heard um, so on his jewelry, these should all probably be uh, infused weapon damage. Just give us a bit more HP, which is very valuable for survival. Daedric Trickery can rub my ball sack, is how I feel about that Hector. Ability. And then our other uh, set, which is going to be our Mythic, is going to be the Mark and Ring of Majesty. Um, Mythic item wise, th this is an okay set and forget, but again, he did emphasize that you needed damage like at the beginning of the video you need a damage for this patch okay marking ring of majesty really doesn't give you damage it, it gives you like 200 and like weapon spell damage but that's it man and sea serpent's coil i i know you guys hate that snare i if you're not a fan of bee hopping i mean you, you can toss on a bunch of swift sea serpent's coil is the most stat dense one piece item in the entire game it keeps you from getting ganked, first of all. 40% damage mitigation when you're at full health. It gives you major courage, which is like almost 500 weapon and spell damage, which is going to bolster your damage and also your healing. And it gives you major berserk. That's another 10%. So that's like 15% damage all the time. And you cannot get ganked. Yeah, there's a snare. So what? So if you want damage, get Sea Serpents. Before they nerf it. It's going to get nerfed. I know it is giving us 200 weapon damage and 2300 armor. Very well-rounded mythic, again, does not negatively impede us in any way. Gives us a big boost to our offense. He is emphasizing negatively impede him, so he must not like Sea Servants, like at all. The reason he doesn't like Sea Servants is because you have to roll dodge and b-hop. The reason he can't do that is because he's running all in pin. Please guys, if you're in open world, go six well-fitted, one reinforced heavy. That's, that's just the way to go. 
offensive and defensive capability on just a one piece and so there's just so much value out of this mythic and it has been one of my favorite mythics in the elder scrolls online ever since it came out back in deadlands now the big thing i want to break down with this build is going to be the weights and uh, mostly the weights from the gear now in terms of enchants we are all tri stat all tri stat on your gear i do apologize to your wallet but it is the best in terms of your traits we're going to go reinforced on the chest that is heavy and then impen on everything else but where this patch differs in pin and bgs um you have even less crit in battleground so I, I don't think it's more beneficial at all no i i think it's actually worse so than than open world i've been loving how you've been going over to other people's builds giving a good and the bad and should start doing other classes maybe yeah absolutely guys i'm branching out i'm going to like i don't want to grind up other characters but i'm going to play all the classes like i know i've been like a one trick maybe a two trick here on the channel and quite frankly, you know, I'm tired of it. I'm going to play all the classes. Like when I have time, obviously, I'm going to try to master each and every single class. Am I going to be the best at every class? Absolutely not. Um, but I'm going to try to put out really good content for you guys. You know, hybrid variants, magic of stamina. I'm going to try to do everything. Uh, Lord willing, right? So when I do roll characters, I'm probably going to pick a race. You know, that's going to allow me to flip flop back and forth without having to do very expensive race changes. But we are going to branch into everything. It's just... I have to get out of my comfort zone because you have to look at from from my perspective um i'm i'm a pretty decent pvp content creator and when i get caught out in open world when i get caught out in duels or whatever when i when i get my cheeks clapped you know people are gonna make exposed videos about it so for the time being i'm trying to play classes that i know i'm good at that it's going to be difficult to shit on me i, I hate that's just how it is like it, when you're kind of popular that that's just how it is you get targeted so if i'm on an unfamiliar class and someone claps to me and it's, it's like oh i just shit on horcrux here's a couple of exposed videos about it and now people are coming into my comments like talking shit you know what i mean so it will get to that point so this is just kind of me, me being you know, a little timid going to, uh, to other classes. I do practice off stream, so I don't want to look like an absolute potato for you guys. But uh, I just kind of throw that out there. We are going to start playing everything. Like, if I start getting packed up and people start making video, dude, I don't even care anymore. That that's that's more exposure for me. So uh, by all means, make more videos. First from the past is going to be the weights. I've always run a three three one, but not this patch. I actually run a three two two. We run two heavy two light and three medium now you might be asking well dots why do you two heavy three light three wait 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 what you do that so believe it or not maggie k's sustain issues this patch do not come from your magical pool but from your stamina pool specifically due to the fact that um yes and no with the stamina pool thing um personally as long as you have 30k resistances and like 30k health it doesn't matter what your weights are um a good rule of thumb if you are running five light armor always run one infused cost reduction that will carry your sustain through most situations if you are running anything other than five light maybe uh, two heavy three medium whatever run two infused cost reductions okay trust me on this your combustion passive is going to carry your magic as sustain like even though they did nerf it pretty heavily it's still actually really really good and as long as you're on two cost reductions you're set you're gucci so uh just 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 the thought that you not only have noxious breath pulling out of your stamina pool you have resolving vigor pulling out of your stamina pool you have molten whip now pulling out of your stamina pool and you have all core combat stuff pulling out of your stam pool and so for that reason you do have a lot of demand on your stamina and so heavy or excuse me medium armor just helps with that based off of the passive that you get on top of that this the passive that you get what what passive gives you stamina return like is it, is it recovery because if you have low recovery getting more recovery isn't going to help you like let's say if you have like 600 recovery and each piece gives you two percent extra stam recovery okay that's uh a 600 divided by 10 that's 60 that's 10 percent two divide that by five you're getting like 20 extra stamina like what patch is no. very very focused around peak 
damage. It's all about burst right now. Consistent pressure is dog water this patch. And so because of that, That's you true. really, really need to be bursting people down. And that is where the, uh, well, the agility passive is nice because it gives us more weapon damage. But that is primarily where the dexterity passive comes in and increases your critical damage and healing done by two percent per every piece of medium armor equipped and so when you do hit a crit wearing three pieces of medium your peak value is going to be very high especially due to the fact that valor is supplying a lot of penetration for us when we do ultimate and have noxious up oh you guys have to understand like more light armors can give you more crit chance but if you only have like a 22% crit, like how much is this really helping you? I personally prefer to go with like raw damage and not having to rely on crit. Um, a really good alternative to this, um, I'll show you guys maybe on stream today. I'm actually running mechanical acuity on my Dragonite. And I, I know it sounds stupid. I'll talk more about it later, but it actually fucking slaps. Now, in terms of enchants, we are all tri stat. Fuck, what? Really is... need to be bursting people down okay. and that is where the uh well the agility passive is nice because it gives us more weapon damage but that is primarily like the crits can hit really 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 hard and also especially with valor giving us that extra weapon damage too agility also gets a lot more value as well giving us extra bonuses on that weapon damage and just giving us higher peak weapon damage especially because the dk does also have major and minor brutality so running the three pieces of medium on the dk this patch just feels like it has a lot of value i tested running uh Can three, two, two i tested my normal three three one three heavy three light one in reality guys it doesn't matter what your fucking weights are it's such a small difference anyway it really doesn't matter just as long as you aren't running something like five heavy and then want to complain about damage right just whatever your builds are just like whatever your weights are just compensate in your jewelry sustain that's how i make all my builds i have all my gear i have all my sets and then when it comes down to my jewelry that's how i fill in the gaps on my build so don't really worry about weights all too much medium i tested heavy two medium uh too light i think yeah that's enough pieces right <laughs> yeah seven uh I, I tested a lot of different armor weight combinations but to me personally the three medium too heavy too light felt the best now you're gonna be have to be a lot more strict with your replacement so your gloves and your belt need to be light your chest needs to be heavy um and then basically like of the four remaining pieces you know make one heavy and three medium doesn't necessarily matter what slots they're in just due to the armor weights being the same um, in terms of your jewelry trait, um, he is correct. Um, I don't worry about that. The only thing I worry about is having my chest heavy reinforced. The rest of the weights, yeah, the, the, there are some elitist, there are some efficiency things, you know, like your sash giving you the, the least amount of armor. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It, it really doesn't matter, to be honest. It's who have one arcane with a weapon damage, one infused with a weapon damage, and one infused with a reduced skill cost enchant. We are. I didn't know this existed. I shit you not, I didn't know this existed. But depending on how many stamina abilities you have on the build, you may actually still need to stick with one infused magic of reduction. I would say if you're going to run this prismatic cost enchant, you should probably have like 50-50 between your magic and stamina, M maybe even 60-40. Um, but if you only have like one or two stamina abilities on your build, then it's going to be more beneficial to just run a uh, magic, magic uh, uh, reduced cost. We're no longer using reduced magic cost here. We need the reduced skill cost simply due to the fact that reduced magic cost doesn't work on Molten Whip anymore. It doesn't work on Vigor, obviously, and it doesn't work on Noxious Breath. So having this reduced prismatic cost is really, really valuable because it will reduce the cost of every single one of our skills, including both halves of Molten Whip. And so for that reason, this is going to be your new cost reduction glyph that you want to use on the Magic Dragon Knight. For your weapons, we're going to you have are correct, uh, one. Nern Honed Found base, that out day one. Uh, Nern Honed BSW, because BSW is obviously on the front bar, with a Magic Glyph. The reason that we do this is due to the fact that the Absorb Mag is due to the fact that we have charged on the offhand. And so by hitting somebody with this Glyph, you have the opportunity to apply the Overcharge status effect, which gives you my minor Magic of Steel, and it is a huge form of sustain. So very, very good enchant here, especially we don't really care about Flame because we have enough stuff procking Flame. 
And then on the offhand, we do have a poison enchant for the opportunity to get stamina combustion. And then the charge is going to give us a really high probability of making that happen. And then on our back bar, we are actually using an ice staff now, a defending ice staff. Ice staff, good man, good man, good call, good call, good call. Yes, sir. With weapon and spell damage, the reason we use an ice staff and not a sword and board is because I do want the opportunity to heavy attack for Magicka should I need it. We no longer run a resto staff because we no longer use Robert regen because it's really bad now. Um, and so to me, having the ice staff with the ability to block is going to be really really valuable obviously no point in a trifocus because we do want our block to come out of our stamina pool um so we use a defending ice staff with a weapon and spell damage correct Please. now that, guys that moving into our skills our first skill is going to be molten whip i um front bar um this is pretty much exactly what I, what i would run one suggestion i would kind of lean away toward I run Burning Embers because people hunt me down in open world and I want a 1v1. So Burning Embers gives me that 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 one-on-one -on -one pressure that the DK is lacking. Ideally, if you're running dual world, you'll want to run spin to win, or you'll want to run something like deep breath in this slot instead. Or if you're running dual world, I, I mean, excuse me, a, a two-hander, um, you can put on an executioner you could take off whip put on a dizzying swing uh, executioner you know whatever forward momentum whatever but burning embers on solo build i'm trying to lean away from but the reason I, again i run it is for uh the 1v1s you don't really know how i feel about the new molten whip i really don't but regardless we deal 8.8k flame damage or whatever your tooltip is uh and then you strike an enemy immobile or stun you set them off balance and then when you activate a different art of flame ability you gain a stack of seeding fury increasing the damage of your next molten whip by 20 percent and your weapon is spell damage by 100 for 15 seconds this effect stacks up to three times uh Good i Lord. don't really know how i feel about the new molten whip if i'm going to be honest with you it definitely feels weaker than it was in the past especially you know we got the sometimes it just doesn't um, I'm going to skip forward because the bar is self-explanatory. There's really nothing to talk about. I'm, I'm going to skip over this. The only thing to talk about is that the Burning Embers heal is dog shit. Shattering Rocks is uh, probably the best option in open world unless you're running Power Lash. And so Shattering Rocks gives you a really good heal. Also, when you cast Shattering Rocks, it gives you stamina back as well. Molten Whip is pretty much a must because, uh, again, you have to burst people. You can't do the sustained pressure of Power Lash. If you do want to run Power Lash, I suggest you run Talons. The other morph, uh, not Shattering Rocks, but Fossilized with Power Lash. Uh, you can try that. And uh, run Flames of Believing as a spammable. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's. He's, he's at Noxious Breath right here. So we're going to skip ahead because I, I don't want to hear uh, what you say on Swords versus Maces. So, rule of thumb. If you are going to use Corrosive a lot, use Swords. If you are going to Leap a lot, use Maces. If you are going to run mechanical acuity, use daggers. Wink, wink. No, not not daggers, maces. Fuck, not maces. God, axes, axes. If you're running mechanical acuity, use axes. So noxious breath. Um, again, when you use corrosive, noxious breath is wasted. You don't get extra damage. Engulfing flame. Yes, it only makes you do six percent more damage. Um, I'll kind of back up when he starts talking about it. I'm just kind of letting him talk through. Sorry, I'm skipping a few things, but this is way too long of a section for skills, in my opinion. wrong and no i'm not um if you act wait i have to hear this our breath morph of choice dealing poison damage over 24 seconds and giving us major breach for that a roughly 6k pen now something that i got commented on, on and uh for you guys that, that, that don't know like how the numbers work um 6, pen is equivalent to about 10 percent extra damage just just so you guys know on my previous video that I want to address, people were saying, Dots, Noxious is not more damage than Engulfing Flames. You're wrong, and no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, if you actually do the math, Engulfing Flames, when it is at its peak, says that it is only 6% damage increased. Now, the way that resistance damage works is that 600... I think we've already talked about that. I'm not going to waste time on that. Uh, let's talk about Leap. Okay. Uh, I'm more curious about his back bar. How much HP we have for six seconds. This proportion of your ability will scale off maximum health. Absolutely gigunda shield with Ferocious Leap. But one of the great things about Leap is its versatility. It's a very cheap costing ultimate. It launches you for a gap closer. It deals instantaneous burst damage. It is a CC. It gives you a big shield. It 
And if you're an Imperial Cyrodiil and you just want to end it all, you can leap up to the, the faction units kind of up top there and instantly kill yourself. Real fun time. Looks very cool. It it just does it all. It's offensive, defensive, crowd control, gap close. It's just, it's a very versatile ultimate. Now, I know some people absolutely love Corrosive. You love Corrosive, use Corrosive there. But in my opinion, I just don't think Corrosive is as good as Leap. Corrosive is also a lot more... Oh man, oh man, we, we're about to tear dots a new one here. I'm, I'm letting finish. Oh boy. Telegraphed, it is more expensive. Um, personally for me, if I ever fight a corrosive DK and I, I see them pop corrosive, I just walk away until corrosive. A good DK will kill you even before you know corrosive is active, but we'll, we'll, I'll let him talk. Or it's off and then I go back in. Um, and I also do feel personally that corrosive can give you some false sense of tankiness. Uh, a lot of times that 3% of your max health doesn't really affect the dots all that much. And so like, I just personally feel that the leap shield and the versatility of the skill is we'll uh, see rapid the regen got Fuck. gutted pretty- We'll see the thing is uh, that's not always necessarily true. If you see someone glow green, you can actually cast uh, coagulating blood to make yourself transparent or opaque. And then you'll never know if they pop corrosive or not other than a sound cue. But I'll I'll come back and circle around to this here in just a moment. Uh, I actually fucked up into the wrong spot. Fuck man, I always do this. Shit hits hard as hell and adds a But if for some reason you do disagree with me here, you can run corrosive here. Oh Perfectly yeah. Fine. Go ahead. But I am always a fan of leap. I do think it's a bit better of an ultimate overall. All right, where do I begin? So let's let's talk about the point of being telegraphed. Leap has a minimum travel distance. If I'm 1v1ing, I can block Leap every single time. Every single time you can block Leap. If you're paying attention to your 1v1s, you will always be able to block Leap. So Leap is very, very telegraphed. You have plenty of time to, to block, you know, whatever. Um, so let's let's do some math. I I, I know or crux of math it does not mix well. When it comes to light damage, corrosive is the best ultimate in the entire game. The best ultimate in the entire game. Okay. Not only does it make you, it, it, it gives you like 12 seconds to line up a burst. It pierces all physical resistance and spell resistance. Let's say for example, someone is running around with 30 K resistances. Like I suggested earlier. We know just from what I told you guys earlier, earlier that 6K pin is equivalent to 10% damage. So you're gonna do 30,000 divided by 6,000, that's five. So each one of these little piggies, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%. This is automatically giving you 50% increased damage against someone that has 30K resistances. A good DK will time his corrosive and you will not know what happened. If you see anyone around 50% health, literally anyone, and you have a times three seething fury molten whip ready to go, if you're on your back bar, if you pop corrosive, swap to front bar, fossilize, animation cancel a whip, and it crits, they're going to be in execute range. So if you have spin to win, they are just instantly dead. There's nothing they can do. Corrosive. If you use it incorrectly, yeah, it, it's stupid and, and, and you feel like a moron. But good DKs know exactly when to use it. So I do not agree with Dots at all saying this is the most telegraph ultimate in the game. This is the sneakiest ultimate in the game. Because again, if you pop coagulating blood, you're transparent and opaque. You will not know corrosive is up unless someone is actually paying attention to the damage numbers. Or they have their volume up so loud they can hear the pss, 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 like you're calling a cat noise, right? So corrosive is the best ultimate in the game. Argue all you want. It's it it is what it is. It gives you and to his point earlier about not having enough damage this patch. This is the best ultimate for damage as well. So you're super tanky and you do hellacious damage. Best ultimate in the game. If you can save up for corrosive and pop it, always use corrosive in my opinion this patch since it is a tank meta. I don't know if you guys agree, but Ferocious Leap is an, I mean, not Ferocious Leap, well, Corrosive Armor is an absolute must on your Dragonite. Just put it somewhere, I don't care. Uh, the build's been, you know, kind of whatever so far, but I 100% disagree with his, uh, his Corrosive argument. 
Brawl. It's really good. Also, if you pull it with Balor, shit hits hard as hell and adds a lot more burst into your combo. You can also surprise people with it, do really cheeky things with its abilities. So I really, really do like Deep and do recommend running it. Back bar. Okay, back bar, he's running undo. Do you want an ultimate that gives you 5% mitigation while slotted? Or do you want corrosive armor that, come on, come on. We are using igneous weapons as our form of major brutality. This shit is insanely good. Um, gives you major brutality for seven. Um, I wish igneous weapons did more. This is a really good source of major brutality, especially on the Dragonite. If you run minor heroism potions, you need a source of major brutality anyway. Not only does this give you major brutality, but due to your passes, this also procs minor brutality. So it kind of puts everything uh, together in one ability. This is really good and it lasts for forever. It's a it's a set and forget skill. It's a, it's actually one of my favorites. 72 seconds on top of generating ultimate. Yeah, and Mars is still good, dude. Due to earth and heart passives. Yeah. This ability was already the most magicka efficient source of major brutality in the game and they just made it even more magicka efficient so there's even less of a reason now to use degeneration or other skills so degeneration will cost i believe it is 68 magicka per second of major brutality while igneous weapons cost only 50 magicka per second of major brutality. um significant if you guys care uh, i'm just gonna go through the back bar um he's running vigor which is correct this will give you minor resolve Coagulating bloods when your burst still, yeah. Volta armor is fine. Risk and Sime is fine. Um, I don't see Ash Cloud. Guys, let me go off on another little bit of a tangent. Deltia nor Dots has mentioned Ash Cloud. Let me put into perspective how powerful Ash Cloud is, okay? It is one of the best healing over time abilities in the game. The entire game. It procs per second. If you run one infused cost reduction, that ability is damn near free to cast. Now, that's important for many reasons. Okay, it's a nice dot you can toss down. It's a 70% snare hot, excuse me. It gives you like, it ticks for like 1,000 like every second on you. I mean, it's it's amazing, okay? But what a lot of people don't realize is that when you use Ash Cloud, it gives you 1,000 stamina back every time you recast it. So again, if you run Infuse Cost Reduction, it costs nothing. So every single time you cast Ash Cloud, you get a free thousand stamina the entire time. Okay. So if you can't heavy attack on your front bar, you know, dual for whatever reason, you can just spam Ash Cloud and literally get your entire stamina pull back, you know, behind a tree, you know, whatever, just, 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 sit, just sit there and cast it over, over and over. It's a really good hot. And I, like, again, it, it's the most efficient hot in the game. Probably one of the best hots. It costs nothing and you get free stamina for using it. Um, one, it's a quintessential on all my Dragonite builds. I always run Ash Cloud just for the, the sheer utility of it. And plus, if people's trying to run away from it, you can actually toss it in front of them. And it does slow them pretty substantially. I mean, it's, it's, it's just the little tricks with it. But yeah, Ash Cloud, if you can slot it, guys, please slot that shit. Significantly more magic efficient. Um, and so for that reason, um, I don't like race against time. You could run race against time. I run sea serpents on all my builds just for because it's a very overtuned method. It really is. You didn't hear it here. Please don't tell Zoss this because they will nerf it into the ground because they don't know what the game needs compared to what people want. You know, that that whole vocal minority bullshit. But uh, yeah, I would drop race against time and then just tank up, man. That, that's how I like to play the DK. I like to face tank people uh, just running around like obstacles and line siding him. His build is not meant for a turn and burn. Now, if he had like spin to win with a cult overload, then yeah, yeah, race against time, pretty cool, but he doesn't have that. So you don't really have a lot of turn and burn possibilities. Highly recommend using Igneous weapons if you're not using it. Um, people have also asked me hey, you're why welcome, do you not Lone use Wolf. Armaments? Because it sucks. Empower is a PVE buff. It adds literally 80 damage to your light attacks. That is crazy. Um, so I'm gonna skip through this, guys. Uh, he's gonna explain his back bar, it's fine. I'm curious to see what he says about undo compared to corrosive. Reasons I never ran rat in the past was because the two seconds of snare and root immunity was way too short. You were casting this ability all the time in order to kite, but now it's four seconds and the minor force is 20 seconds. So it makes this ability way, way, way. Um, it is a really good ability. Uh, race against time is it, it's. It is really good. If I could slot it on my Dragonite, I would 100% run it. Um, but you, you just got juicier abilities like Ash Cloud. I mean, it is what it is. Way, way better to use. The quality of life on the skill is insanely good. And so for that reason, 
I do think that Race Against Time is now, pains me to say this, it is now officially better than Mist Form. If you're still a vampire, especially off of my recommendation, unfortunately, Great it test. is time to drop it. Um, it hurts our sustain too much. We need more damage, and Race Against Time gives us that damage on top of giving us some solid mobility buffs. We also do use Temporal Guard on the back bar. You could also put Corrosive here as well if you want Corrosive and Leap. Personally, I like Temporal Guard here because it gives me access to Major and Minor Protection, Major Resolve and Minor Resolve. It just adds a lot of extra tank. What? Some solid mobility buffs. We also do use Temporal Guard on the back bar. You could also put Corrosive here as well if you want Corrosive and Leap. Personally, I like Temporal Guard here because it gives me access to Major and Minor Protection, Major Resolve and Minor Resolve. It just adds a lot of extra tankiness into the build, in my opinion. Major and Minor Resolve? Major and Minor Protection? Am I missing something? Now, really good stats, especially if you're not a vampire. I mean, stats actually looks pretty solid. And this number will only go up higher when we're afflicted with the magical status effect because we are a Breton. Yeah, Breton, you'll probably get up to like 36k. We also do have major uh, major and minor protection too, making us nice and beefy. Then we also have 2700 critical resistance. We use the Atronach, Mundestone, and the Bewitch Sugar Skulls buff food. Uh, we yep. are using 31, uh, 13 points into health and 51 points into Magicka to give us our stat numbers. In terms of our potions, guys, I know this is an expensive recommendation, but it is the best. It is going to be your... Dragon's Blood, Dragon's Rum, and Columbine. I'm just going to say it now. This this is probably the best potion in the game for Dragonite. If you can't afford it, I mean, you can't afford it. I mean, it is really, really expensive uh, to make. And there's really no alternative I mean, you can run tripods i mean that's perfectly fine as well as nice cheap alternative but if you guys have some extra coin to throw around from selling all of your mars set pieces which i sure hope you did from day one then you should be able to uh, to afford these um it's night and day difference it really is your essence of magicka your magicka stamina and minor heroism uh, potions these give you a gross amount of sustain. You get major intellect and major endurance, which helps your recovery. You get big boost to your stats. And by the way, when should you use your potion as a DK? You don't use it like other classes. You use it when you need the bursts of healing, not necessarily to maintain the buffs. But also, minor heroism just combines with the build really- You don't get a burst of healing from these potions, by the way. Really well. Helps us get access to ultimates more easily, which gives us more magic of stamina and health sustain, as well as higher uptime on battle. So the heroism here has a lot of value, which makes these potions by far the best. If you cannot afford these though, regular tri-stat potions will be your second, uh, your second choice here. Now, in terms of races, I'm going to have to recommend the Breton. I think Breton. Uh, debatable. Like, I was Breton just because I didn't want to do a race change, but Nord would still be very strong, even though it's, the, the passes only give you uh, stamina and health. Uh, Imperial is also good because cheaper ultimates mean, you know, more battle roar and stuff. So you can kind of pick whatever. If you're, you want to go like a hybrid route and you're flip-flopping between stamina and Magicka, always go Dark Elf. Dark Elf is like, you know, one of my favorite, it probably, yeah, my favorite race in the entire game, just because I can't make up my mind one day, I'll want to run this. One day I want to run this. And I'm sure I'm not about to work out 24.99 for a race change, so. It is going to be your best race for the build. Not only does it give you a different- Yo, thank you, man. I appreciate that, dude. Additional Magicka and, mag and uh, spell resistance, but it gives you Magicka recovery, and most importantly, spell cost reduction with 7% cost reduction. However, the other race that I would recommend for this build would be the Imperial, simply due to the fact that 2,000 health and 2,000 stamina will be very, very valuable for this build, as well as that 6% cost reduction will affect everything, including your stamina skills, where my Breton does not have that luxury. I will say, though, if you do run the Imperial, you will want to change some of, the, some of these prismatics to regular Magicka Glyphs to help pad the Magicka that you will lose from no longer being a Breton. Now, guys, going into... Or instead of doing that, you can just pay 3,000 gold, go to your attribute screen and put your health points into Magicka just to save you guys some gold. Our CP, we are going to have dead... All right, I'm going to stop right here. He doesn't have a coal overload slotted. That, That's a thumbs down. <laughs> ...aim for single target and dot damage increase. Master at Arms for direct damage increase. Ironclad for direct damage reduction and resilience for crit damage. This is dog shit.
do not slot resilience you you can slot like literally anything else like i don't care just just don't slot resilience this th this is wasted put this in a coal overload please guys please introduction we are scared of being bursted this patch not being whittled down and so for that reason ironclad and resilience are by far your two most stat dense uh like blue cp defensively they just give you the most mitigation against the stuff that you are scared of in serial now in our red cp we have boundless vitality for 1400 maximum health survival instincts for 25 percent. survival instincts is like one of the best cps ever um it really is survival instincts is amazing this is 25 percent cost reduction to block roll dodge break free it's uh it's amazing core combat reduction this is huge for our build really really necessary for that stamina maintenance you will notice if you do take this into a battleground you will notice the loss of survival instincts uh we also do have pain's refuge for two percent damage reduction for every pain's refuge even if you're on mars bomb this is still like the most stat dense weighted scp passive it's amazing for one vx and always have it be two negative effects up on you up to a maximum of 20 percent and then sustained by suffering for 150 recovery if you are afflicted by a negative effect now, in terms of the rotation for this build, guys, you are going to want to maintain rotation. We don't give a shit. So really fun. And I do very highly recommend it. There's a written version as well in the description below. If you do want to refer to that on my website, dotsgaming.com. But guys, that is going to be it for me today in my updated Magni K PvP build. If you do have any questions about the build, please feel free to leave a comment. Okay, I mean, overall, I mean, Dots uh, does a very good job at explaining things. Uh, he does break everything down, but to have a 35 minute, 22 second video without gameplay footage is, is an absolute no no. I've made that mistake many times. You have to have gameplay footage in here for people to take you seriously. Uh, overall, I mean, the build's okay. Just, just some cliff notes. Um, what I would take away from this is uh, don't listen to him about your back bar ultimate. Always run corrosive. Like, I don't care that like how can you not and it's just I, I don't know man um always run corrosive when it comes to your trades uh, i don't think impen's very very beneficial i would almost always run well fitted uh, when it comes to everything else i mean uh, he did pretty good um if you have access to all the mythic items i highly suggest you guys run sea servants coil that just puts your damage through the freaking roof and if you want to run a monster set i do believe the best monster set on dragonite right now is again blood spawn it's gonna give you four thousand resistances and a metric crap load of ult gen so you can get your your leaps faster your corrosive faster um weapon setups uh the the gear is fine if you like deja trickery that's 100 percent fine but I, I i think mars bomb or a rallying cry would probably be a better alternative than than trickery personally um ash cloud he didn't mention ash cloud please guys attempt ash cloud if you like it cool if you don't i mean that's cool too um, but overall, I mean, the build is pretty solid. He did um, explain everything in depthly, his thought process through everything, uh, which is really good. Um, so pretty solid build overall. So I really don't have anything else other to complain about that I've already complained about it. The corrosive thing hit me pretty hard though, and not having PvP footage, even if it's just like background battleground footage, um, that's you, you. You need that. I mean, he, he should know that. He, he's got like 100k subs. This is, this is not his first rodeo. You know what I mean? just to prove to people like hey this can work you know like again two minutes and two seconds into the video right here um i do plan on having a gameplay video coming out soon with highlights from my stream but if you do want to see this build played again dots look at your analytics i guarantee you take a spike right here in your average view time it's gonna go downtown son so always have gameplay footage i mean i'm not the best obviously i i don't know what i'm doing you know that's just algorithm wise gotta have it man gotta have it but yeah it, it's pretty decent video overall um he, he he plays a lot of dk so i'm not gonna like bash on him any more than that it's just just not not having corrosive is kind of weird to me uh personally but uh yeah go uh go like and sub to dots i mean he's almost almost at 100k subscribers i mean he's still um i, I think i saw a week ago he's gonna take a break from uh streaming and eso or, or just in general i mean he's an engineer as well he's got outside stuff going on and um, it, it, it's not easy doing ESO you know, all the time. That's why he's been doing, I think, BDO, you know, something like that, Black Desert Online or some other games. I don't really know. But uh, it's hard to stay on ESO full time. It really is. So, yeah, a pr pretty solid build video. A little windy. Needs some gameplay. But other than that, it's is pretty nice.